start recording this session okay um we are in the second session and um, we are going to talk about uh, procure to pay process and order to pay um, order to cash process am i audible to everyone yes okay excellent So in this process, we are going to talk about um, order to cash and procure to pay process. And uh, these are the, the main business process or business cycles that are going to, we are going to work on because those are the, the ones that impact the finance. And um, pretty much these, these two business flows cover the entire financial modules that we are going to talk about but there are a, like there is a record to uh, and then like a report process which is pretty much just a gl process but um, since like we if we cover this it also includes being a part of that because that's just a sub process of this particular uh, process and uh, so if we talk about procurement, what is that that comes into the mind in the first thing when we talk about procurement? You can unmute yourself and like you, you can make it a more interactive. So when you wanted to procure something, what is that first you make sure that you procure? So you won't procure anything that is not required. So the first the condition that you need to make sure. So there should be a requirement. That, that is the first condition that you need to make sure. How the requirement? Requirement can raise because of various conditions. The requirement comes based on the demand. The requirement comes based on the um, like a need. And requirement comes because of um, the internal consumption um, requirements. So like I, I'll take a simple example. So when we want to procure something, I'll just take a simple example. If you wanted to buy vegetables, so what is that like that that pushes you to buy the vegetables? One, your vegetables are all like done at the home, or you want to cook something that is like a, a good recipe. So, so either of these like will push for and create a requirement to purchase vegetables. In the similar fashion, when there is a requirement, what is that you make sure? So they, they, there should be something else also that somebody who is ready to supply that. So there should be somebody who is ready to supply that. So and then, so once we have supplier, what else do we need? We, if we have supplier, we won't just like get everything, whatever we want. We, we have to have a, a certain procedural manner that we can be able to talk to the supplier. That is what is called negotiation. So we talk to him and we try to negotiate with him and make him to understand we wanted to buy these whatever the item that we are buying and then like we we want to give him at a reasonable price so that is what we need to make him so but when we go to a vegetable market like we won't do we call it as negotiation in that case like it's a bargaining But in case of 
a bigger organization they won't call it as bargaining bargaining it's called negotiation so they start negotiate so they talk to a lot of people they they pick they speak to multiple suppliers and request them with respect to that so i'll go a little like i'll try to provide you the the flow how it is going to look so this is the the purchasing or the procure to pay process where there is a need for the material the material need comes from the inventory department the inventory department is going to the inventory going uh, department is going to raise the the purchase requisition and the purchase requisition has to be followed and then like the the item that you are looking for and the quantity that you are looking for that is what is sent to the the purchasing department what purchasing department does is if they purchased this similar item in the past they start go ahead and create a purchase order and talk to the supplier but assume it is not necessary that like the same item is procured in the past so if that particular item is not procured in the past there is a process called sourcing it's a very very big process that sourcing process is is going to follow this the entire process of purchase requisition when there is this particular item requirement has never arisen in the past in such cases what is that the sourcing department or the sourcing team within the purchasing department will do that so what they do they request for a quotation and they send this is the item that we need the item can be a so what they do is they wanted to procure an item called mobile phone so this is the item that they wanted to procure and when they want to procure the mobile phone so they need to make sure they communicate to the lot of supplier and they request for the quotation so when the supplier request receives the request for quotation he responds with what is the quantity or the schedule that he can provide to you or the, to the purchasing department and he will also provide what is the best price that he can provide because within his organization as well he cannot produce mass produce the item whenever you want it or he may be supplying for other customers as well so he will set a, a right quantity limit when he is supplying that particular item mobile phone so he will respond back to the the request for quotation rfq and he will provide a quote that is called a quote so based on the supplier received rfq supplier response what is the supplier response the supplier response is going to be the quote so supplier sent the quote what is the next step so we do need to in a similar fashion we received multiple quotes from multiple suppliers in that case 
what we do is like we analyze the code that is called the process of code analysis and then once we analyze the code and we know that like this is the best price in the market and we are going to get the best price at the best schedules the schedule in the sense like uh, so he may say that like uh, every month 15th he can produce a maximum of 100 mobile sets that he can supply based on his capacity of the production so this is called capacity supplier capacity and then there is a price there is a price as well and he will also say that like since i am going to send you 100 mobiles that might cost me something like a, a hundred and fifty hundred dollars i'll say take a little lower price and um, if i produce if i uh, supply more than 100 then my price will go to 95 like that the negotiations will continue based on that because when you when a supplier sends usually we all understand when supplier can produce and send lot of items that means more the quantity he can be able to give us a discount or he can benefit when he is producing uh, mass product mass production such is the benefit that he will communicate as the the price band that what is the item range suppose if he is one to hundred units he will give us a, a rate of hundred dollars and hundred and one to 299 units he give us a price of a price band of 95 dollars anything above 299 he can give us only for 80 dollars so that, that's what he agreed with us so this is what is called negotiation we talked about negotiation so that is basically like what price what are the best schedules that you can be able to meet so if he wanted like every month he can only produce 100 commodities or 100 items of the mobile and then how best he has to increase his capacity to produce or give us the, the more items any questions at this point in time? No. Okay. No. Excellent. So, okay. I'll quickly go back to the, the process here. So, when we talk about the code analysis, the code analysis will give us a lot of inputs. Based on that, we take the decision or the purchasing department takes the decision and then they approve the supplier they can approve for the same item they can approve uh, multiple suppliers as well so that is what is called an approved supplier list and once the supplier is approved again the purchasing department will take that information from the code team and then they will send a purchase order to the supplier once supplier receives the purchase order he will send us an acknowledgement that he received a purchasing purchase order if he can meet the schedule he will say yes i am meeting the schedule so i am going to produce these items based on the schedules that you mentioned and the based on the discuss rate if there is any kind of like fluctuations that that could prove us are like if, sometimes what happens is like there is a change in the exchange rate 
So he will let us know and say that, oh, there could be potential price changes. Because if he is producing, if he is uh, giving it from a, a different country altogether. So those are the, the indications that he could provide us from the suppliers. And uh, once the supplier meets the requirement and he sends us a GRN along with the, the mobile phones that he produced and that is the, the in our organization sense it is going to be called as a receiving so the in this process we are going to receive the items or the mobile phones in this case and then we are going to record the against the the purchase order and say that we have received the quantity of 100 units and uh, we also say that like we received on 15th of this month and we say that like we received 100 quantity based on the, the purchase order. So that is what is called GRN means goods receipt note. So this is a the very olden term but still it is continued across the globe and this is a, a well known term so you can always like write it down. It is very useful when somebody tells you a goods receipt note GRN and you won't need to get confused with these ones because in the purchasing terminology that is called quickly GRN in abbreviated term. So once the items are received if there is any kind of inf inspection needed they'll quickly check that everything is fine and it's okay then what they do is like the the inventory team is going to deliver into the inventory department or the warehouse so that in this process this, this particular item is available for supply to our customer we'll talk that in the detail in the next flow this what happens to the item that so i told you when that supplier says there is a possible price changes when there is a possible price change, we get to see a purchase price variance. Assume that there was a, a, a price um, or the exchange rate that was changed from the, the time that we raise and by the time the suppliers produces and sends us the items and we receive the items, there is a possible uh, purchase price variance. In that case, that is called a purchase price variance and that is recorded as purchase price variance when it is delivered into the uh, inventory. This is very, very key when you, when you, at what time that you, somebody can ask you what is the, at what time you receive the purchase price variance. Whether it is Oracle flow or any flow for that matter, this is going to be a standard flow of the within the organization somebody want to do the the process so when 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 somebody delivers into the inventory if there is any kind of changes the change based on what this particular purchase price variance is because when supplier sends us and um, the, the PO has a specific price, but our standard cost has a different rate. So if there is any difference between the PO price and the standard cost, we get to see the purchase price variance. Okay, and then um, let's go quickly go back to the when the when supplier sent us the items, he won't leave us there. He he will he want money as well so he will send us a a supplier invoice which is nothing but a purchase invoice and then the payment department or the accounting department will receive that and then they record that the purchase invoice and once the, the based on the payment terms 
if it is like another 30 or like maybe sometimes like it could be 60 days or it could be 90 days based on those terms the supplier gets the, the payment for the, the purchase invoice but so in this process as well there is a possible variances so that we'll talk when we talk in the detail when it is an accounting um, specifics okay in this process you guys have understood something have not understood something because i quickly ran you ran through the process to give a fair view of the the, the diagram that i made now you can raise questions so that like we will now go into the little deeper process of detail step by step manner and what it means when it comes to the article. Any questions? You can have any kind of question that don't worry about it. Okay. So Sharif was asking, explain the GRN. The GRN is goods receipt note. When somebody sends items or the, like in this case, like we are talked about mobile phones. When the supplier sends the mobile phones, he will pack every mobile phone in an individual packaging and then he will put that in a specific box or a carton that is called and then he will send us either through a courier or through another um, media that he can be able to send us and make it to deliver to the to his customer when he is sending that like the GRN explains that uh, what is the item that was packed in that particular box or the cotton and uh, what is the quantity of that particular um, the item that he has supplied and um, so there could be potential like based on the country there could be say that like uh, this contains so many chemicals so many things so many it, it might it has been produced in so and so country and it has been assembled in so and so place and this is shipped from so and so location to the ship to the specific location excuse me so that is what is that particular grn contains did i make sense sharif okay i let me explain you grn GRN is a small document. It looks like okay. So this might contain a serial number and it, it can contain items, it might contain description and a point. On the top, so this is what we are talking about. This is a GRN and uh, this will have a number, GRN number. I am just taking an example of it. and. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be shipped to location and he might even say that like ship from location and in this case like he'll say that like item is like one zero 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 one and the mobile phone is like Ericsson um, 
p two zero zero and then quantity is one hundred and he'll say that serial number two and he'll say that like one two three four zero zero one and he'll say that like a charger under and then on the third one he will say that like uh, and um, there could be an extended wire or like maybe a usb cable that he will say that like 100 so when he is sending the goods receipt notes this is the information that he is going to send and he will also say that like some details here and say that like this is produced in in um, Denmark and meets um, all the federal requirements like that something like he will put a note and then like he will send us so this all looks like in one single page, this is what we are going to receive along with the, um, the, the items that we have received. This is what is basically the GRN that we are talking about. This is GRN means goods receipt note. Is it, um, did I explain you Sharif, what you are looking for? You can unmute yourself and like say that. Okay, that's fine. So, okay. Then let's uh, let's talk. Um, let's go to the generic flow. How we talked about when it is image. How this is how it is. How the individual flow is like is going to what we explained I am going to explain it in a generic flow so the the first aspect whenever there is a requirement it has to be identified that we need a specific item for a supply so then that comes from the usually from the inventory or like if there is a stationary it can come from any kind of department if it is like something else, like maybe somebody needs some specific based on the organization policy, they will all identify that particular requirement. And if it is a, if, if somebody want to buy the raw material that always comes from the inventory department and they identify the requirement in the inventory department and they authorize that particular uh, requisition and then it will go to the the final approval of the purchase requisition and then the procurement process starts and in the procurement process the, the first aspect is they have to identify the supplier and um, who can produce that part who can supply that particular item and uh, they make the inquiries and say that like this is what the item that we needed can we be able to produce and uh, when there is a requirement the requirement also follows a specific uh, uh, aspect that this item is needed within so and so time so that is that particular aspect will be discussed during the inquiries with the supplier and then so once we talk to the uh, supplier and we ask them to provide the the quotation for that that is called rfq that's what i explained it to you here and uh, the purchasing department or the sourcing team within the purchasing department they request for the the quotation and uh, that is what happens during the inquiries process and then they receive the quotation so that is what once they receive the quotation so what they do is like they they start the the quote analysis 
in the court analysis they go back and forth with the supplier and they negotiate one they can negotiate the terms they can negotiate the the price they can negotiate the supply schedules so so many and so on so they negotiate with the supplier and whoever can produce the best match for the requirement that we are ident we have identified they'll take that particular vendor and they select that particular vendor the vendor and the supplier is same it's only terminology change don't get confused between a vendor and a supplier so here it says supplier and here it says vendor don't worry about it it's pretty much the same term that we are using the person who vends it is a vendor the person who supplies it is going to be the supplier always like the vendor and the supplier is going to be the same so we interchangeably use that term supplier and vendor and uh, if once we select the the supplier or the vendor then we send the the purchase requisition from the purchasing department and uh, supplier sends us an acknowledgement saying that i have received your purchase order and uh, along with the acknowledgement if he sends an acknowledgement means that he has agreed to the terms that we have provided along with the PO and he confirms that he is shipping on so and so date and he produce when that when when he is going to uh, like uh, already shipping he will send us an ASN sorry that is called advance shipment notice a S N. So once A S N is sent us, we can record in our system say that the item can e is expected to receive on so and so date. And the goods received along with the G R N goods receipt note. And then we also receive along with the goods an invoice then we the accounting or the ap department will do the recording of that particular invoice and they match that invoice to the the po optionally also to the the receipt so that is what is called three way matching when I touch the in the purchasing, I'm going to explain that what are the various ways of matching and uh, in this particular uh, in the purchasing aspect. And um, once the the invoice is matched, the invoice is ready for payment. Based on the terms that we have agreed with the supplier, we make the payment to the supplier. This is how the generic flow goes. And when it comes to the Oracle specific flow, there may be too many information here, but we, we might not be able to create every document possible. So, but I haven't recorded the, the, the code process here. The code process is called sourcing process. Since um, I am only touching the purchasing aspect here, so I have recorded only the purchasing specific oracle flows so the the first aspect that comes is the purchase requisition and the approval of the purchase requisition either it can be a supervisor or somebody who is a centralized approver who is going to approve the the purchase requisition and as i clearly mentioned in the past if we do not have the supplier has never supplied this item in the past then we go through the court process the court is going to this particular process is purely the sourcing process and the, in that case we request for quotation from the supplier 
and uh, once supplier provided the quotation we make sure we take all the internal decisions and we go back to the supplier we negotiate all that that is all external to oracle so that is that might be happening but uh, we don't have any kind of way to record that so the only way that we record is like acknowledgement from the supplier for the the quotation so we record the acknowledgement from the for the quotation that we sent and one based on the acknowledgement of the quotation we record that particular supplier and he is going to be available in our purchasing as well as payables as a supplier so and he is also going to be part of our approved supplier list once the supplier is available we can create a purchase order so once the purchase order is created and sent to the supplier he will return the in this process there could be acknowledgement but we are not recording any purchase order acknowledgement in the system we are the next step that we are recording is the receipt of the the goods so once that is the accounting starts from here and then when when there is a, we received the inventory again as the po and then we deliver the the goods to the inventory there is an accounting and then when we record the purchase invoice and when we match that purchase invoice there is an accounting entry that takes place so here i put it as o means receipt is optional so i i told you when we talk detail i will explain you the various ways to match the invoice to the po to the receipt to the um, and if there is any kind of inspection required so and then uh, we make the the payment based on the terms to the supplier and when it is when the payment is made and then we perform the reconciliation of the payment so this is the the oracle procure to pay process how the accounting happens so this is the the accounting that happens in procure to pay process so when we received the goods whatever the material control account or the inventory control account or the expense account that gets debited and inventory ap accrual account or the expense ap accrual account that gets credited when this particular items that we have received in the po are delivered to the inventory the material accounts get debited and the inventory material control accounts that gets credited when ap invoice is created and matched to the po and um, we like inventory ap accrual account gets debited and the ap liability account is created when the invoice is fully paid we it it create it it reverses the ap liability and hits the cash clearing account when the cash is reconciled in the cash management the cash clearing accounts get debited and cash account gets credited this is the flow of procure to pay so you guys have any questions no oh, we good thank you oh okay you good so since like um, i like i i i i i'll take a lot of questions at this point in time and um, i i would like to wind up this particular session 
of the second year and then like uh, we'll talk tomorrow a little more uh, detailed with respect to the um, order to cash flow and um, so if you have any questions please go ahead and uh, let me know what what are the questions that you have well only one question is you know like i know, uh, you know will you guys provide a recorded uh, you know uh, what do you call uh, download of this session yes i am going to provide the the recording of this session and uh, okay. we also provide the documentation required for the okay. for for your understanding as well and um, we also provide some kind of additional documentation and okay. uh, we also provide the oracle instance access for you and and since like this is a pretty much like a, a kind of a second session we are going to talk to the talk through the flows and uh, details of that once we uh, show you the demo of the instance and when we are showing the instance we can show you what are these terms and how we are matching to the individual items within oracle and how the flow is because like when we talk about a specific flow and how the flow is flowing within oracle so that that will give you enough of understanding with respect to and you should be able to do on your own when you are practicing from your end okay so that that, that yeah please go ahead i uh, i what was the session one i think you said this is session two right is that the demo um I didn't... this is also a demo but in this demo we are going to talk about the flow of the no executive. you said this is session two right when did you guys do the session one yesterday we did the session one okay so i missed that one i think um, you can get the recording when you when you talk to okay erp um three. okay yeah you can get the recording of that one and um, and can i have your email address like you can you can just ping me the email address i can okay okay somebody from my team will be able to share the the recording of that so in that way like uh, they, you get everything as a recorded session so you that's your own like you you can be able to look at that particular um, recording and you can be able to practice in a detailed manner whenever you want it to okay i got it so that's um, okay so anybody else have any questions i'm good from my side okay excellent excellent um i, I just want to take it as like you guys are understanding everything right or like um, you don't have questions at this point in time You can, kind of, yeah. I guess once we get into the details of it, then we'll have a. Yes, yes, yeah. Once we get into the details of it, like we, you might we get too questions. many questions. Yes, that's for sure. Okay, and then um, so I'll okay. Then I'll say that like uh, I'm ending this session at this point in time, and. Uh, and tomorrow we regroup at uh, 7:30 pm ist and uh, we are going to talk through the detailed flows one more time and then we go into the the oracle screens and we see that uh, how that particular modules that are going to talk to one another okay 
Thank you. Thank you so much.